Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of White Eye of the Needle by Chris Campbell. Dane reads... A collection of poems on love, life and lockdown. This was sent to me by the author himself and also Isabel Kenyon, so shout out to those two. I'm going to read you this quick little blurb and then I'm going to go through, read some poems and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. White Eye of the Needle, the second book of poems by Chris Campbell, explores human connections, both passing and intimate. The collection was put together in Nottingham and also includes pieces from the former journalist time in Bristol, London, Swansea, Glasgow and Gloucestershire, plus visits abroad including a honeymoon in Madagascar and trips to Teens, France. And uh, he also goes to High Wycombe, as we will see, and High Wycombe is where I live. I thought that was nice. Alright, Mr Painter. Houses rub shoulders, paint falls like peeling skin, and I ask where the sea is. Amongst the rubble and the dirt, a small face, school kids back off the bus. They joke, skip and dance and the hills roll in. The background like silent guardians waiting for the rain. An old man grips a rubbish bag like a painter needs his pots. Paint this part, mister, say the kids. Pointing at gaps in the houses, and he sweeps his brush, coarse as a wave, heavy as rain. This too will age. Everything ages. Here's a poem called Mr. Cat. Uh, obviously this made me think of my little nipper, Biggie Cobain. You look at me wide-eyed, Mr. Cat. Green pools like holiday brochure oceans. Sit high on top of the sofa, surveying your world from above. Sharing your play den with our presence, we convert the lounge and bedroom into office space. Paws rest in front, ears twitching at every scrape as neighbours move out furniture. No one will disrupt your kingdom, Mr. Cat. Of toy mice, a scratch post, food bowl and litter tray. Life might change outside these walls, but you grow bigger inside. You've already doubled in size. Without the takeaway trays, empty bottles, sunken sofas, and open history browsers with half-searched mini breaks. You chew plants and think we're not looking, like a child swiping sundown snacks. As we pull out hair over a Zoom or Teams meeting, clinging to coffee, daydreaming about trips abroad. We almost see you thinking, slow blink, a slightly tilted head. You know we don't like it, but you pour and bite leaves. Pretend to scour the ceiling, the walls, before going back for another crunch. Monitoring spiders then, distracted by your tail, you pounce on it, a pest entranced by you, the Pied Piper. Where were you in the Madagascan bush when frogs leapt from toilet seats and a snake tucked its head under our pillow? Your tail's part of you, growing like your claws that scratch the sofa, torso that reaches up the chimney, unsettling dust. Your whiskers, your beautiful markings that evolve and change like a feline chameleon, but grey, white and beige, almost pink. Paws remain soft, your fur shines at four months old, and you purr deeply when touched in the mood. Meows are high and soft unless it's early morning and you can't find us. We continue our hunt for a break for fresh scenery, but know your realm is hard to leave, your chest fur white like a beach. This is your kingdom, Mr. Cat, though you'll never venture outside. Your eyes are deep and bright like a holiday brochure ocean. Alright, so this is Chimney Snorkels. We reach a corner and catch a couple, hand in hand, keep our distance, fingers away from our faces. The light has faded, unveiling the moon, a crescent with a single star below, as if they arrived to a night's party together. The canal glistens, narrow boats like guards on shift, replacing daytime geese patrol. From thin black chimney snorkels, smoke invades the crisp air, putrid and thick. A woman sits in a saloon, back to the open door, asserting a point to male companions. The cafes and pubs look empty, but in the distance, a pizza neon sign bends the horizon. Who has the dough for electricity while no one bakes and not a soul visits? Underneath a bridge, a man waits by the path. His coat is zipped up tight, he seems bemused, anxious. Flashing an impatient look, his eyes brighten in the dark. He lets us pass in silence, a gesture of thank you. His mouth looks like it opens, but it hides behind a mask. So that's one of his uh, lockdown poems, I suppose. This one here is... Uh, <laughs> It's a, um, well, it's a limerick, is it a limerick? Yeah, I think it's a limerick. Uh, but it's like set near where I live in High Wycombe. A white stork flies over West Wycombe Hill, delivering a bundle to Stoke Mandeville. With the tender newborn comes a memorable dawn, like the oranges brightening Seville. Let me have the title poem, White Eye of the Needle. We crouch inside the snow-capped eye of the needle. Ow. Pose for a photo, white fingers fumbling gloves. The view frames us in ice next to a steep black run. Helmets hold goggles, cold as found treasure. We almost kiss as boots crunch in the snow. White glistens near like jewels under sun. I see a sparkle in your eyes, buried behind dark lenses. We stand, hurried as hares, our skis and poles a climb away. And we have illustration, and uh, this comes with a nice little illustration as well. So, Mild Hunger is an open book full of blank pages. You snack on the page numbers, gradually become fuller until you find a chapter. 
each one a different course. The cover, your placemat, bookmark like cutlery, an illustration to savour like dessert. And I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Sandra Evans, who's the illustrator of this, because uh, she's my kind of person by the sounds of it. Sandra Evans is a graphic designer and illustrator with over 20 years experience in the media industry. Growing up in South Wales, she began drawing from a very early age and took inspiration from all the nature around her. She has a degree in illustration and works as a creative designer at the South Wales Evening Post newspaper. Based in Swansea Bay, Sandra now works as a freelance graphic designer and artist. She is passionate about wildlife and the environment and lives a vegan lifestyle. Vegang! I wonder if, does my wrist get green screened out? Anyway, White Eye of the Needle by Chris Campbell. It was pretty good. 3.5 out of 5. Um, like, it wasn't mind blowing. It wasn't terrible, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, I think it was particularly interesting just because of the lockdown themes and the fact that poems have been written during lockdown. Um, kind of almost gives them like a historical significance, I feel. And I also obviously like the fact that there was a little mention of High Wycombe, especially because he's from, uh, yeah, I think on, on the back, Bristol, London, Swansea, Glasgow, and Gloucestershire. And it's like, and High Wycombe, don't forget High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. So yeah, White Eye of the Needle by Chris Campbell. As always, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you're going to read this book or if you've read it already. Let me know what your favourite poem was. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.